once you get to a point in Marketo where you're starting to build campaigns you're going to want to start analyzing the data that you're getting from these campaigns you may say that the analytics tab or the analytics tile here that you see on the screen may be the best way to do that that to a certain degree is correct but that will only give you numbers so for example if you want to look at a particular email in isolation you want to see how many of those emails were sent out how many were delivered how many were opened how many were clicked it will give you numbers if you want a deeper dive into that data ie you want to know who opened the email you want to know when they opened the email you want to know who clicked the email for example you need to start creating smart lists and those smart lists will give you a snapshot at a point in time of those people that have done a particular thing or completed a particular action or fulfill a specific criteria so what we're going to do now is we're going to show you how to create a smart list now a smart list can be a generic smart list across your entire lead database or it can be a smart list that is campaign specific my recommendation to you would be if, if it's a campaign specific smart list then build the smart list in the campaign itself that means that your data, your filter that you're creating within this smart list is self-contained within that campaign. If you're building one that is more generic and you want to know across your entire database, then build it in the lead database section. For the purposes of this video, we're going to build a smart list in the lead database. So straight away, what we need to do from the main screen, again, in this video, we need to click the lead database tile. When you arrive on the lead database submenu, on the left hand side you'll notice that there is a folder called group smart lists. Much like we've done in another video when we created a static list, if you right click the group smart list folder, you will notice we have the option that says new smart list. And the little icon for the new smart list is it looks like a page with a little glowing sun in the right hand top right hand corner so we're going to click that and it will open up a pop-up as with the creation of the static list the folder is automatically populated group smart list because we right clicked on the option on the left hand side we need to give this a name and for the purposes of this video we're going to call it test smart list there we go as with creating a static list, once again you can give it a, a description which will give you a better insight into what this particular smart list is giving you in the form of data. Once you're finished, click the create button and your smart list will appear in the list on the left hand side. What you then need to do is you need to populate this area here by dragging the filters from this right hand list into this area here. Now, for the purposes of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for people within my company, LBDGA, that have an email address that includes LBDGA. So, for a start, we're going to search for email address because I know that that is a field within Marketo. We're going to drag the field over to the left-hand side here and you can see that it populates here. We know that it's a filter because it has the filter symbol here and it has the filter symbol here and it has a green bar across the top. We have a number of options to select when we're, we're looking for email addresses and they're in this drop down menu. So we can search for an individual or a number of email addresses. I can literally just type in my email address here and you'll notice that it will start to search for it within the database and it has then found it and puts it in that blue bar. If I wanted a single email address, that's all I would do. So email address is twilsonlbdga.com. If I wanted multiple email addresses, I could put them in individually, literally by typing them in one after the other into this box here. Similarly, I could type lbdga.com in this box and all the email addresses within our business that have lbdga at the back of the email address will appear here. I can literally go through each one, clicking them, they will add to the list on the right hand side. The other thing that we can do is we can make this a little bit more specific by using this drop down menu. 
we can say email address is not so that is the the opposite of is so in other words we're looking for any email address that isn't twilson at lbdga.com which means it would give me every other email within the database um, starts with so that's a prefix doesn't start with contains doesn't contain is empty is not empty so for every positive you have you have a negative as well so is is not starts doesn't start with and so on and so forth for the purposes of this video we're going to do contains so the email address contains and then we're going to just put the domain in there so anything that's got at lbdga.com what you can do at this point is you'll notice that this is highlighted in grey if we select leads now this will give me a snapshot at this point in time of how many people within the database have that particular domain name and as you can see they're all listed here on the page if we go back to smart list for every filter you add in from the right hand side you will end up getting a lower number of leads because you're making the search criteria narrower alright so what we've got in here at the moment is we have email address contains at lbdga.com we're going to hit this cross and that will delete the actual filter that we had in there for an email address and we're going to add opened email so you can see that's appeared there now we're going to drag it over here so what we've got at the moment at the, is email address contains lbdga.com and has opened we're going to change this from what from is to is any so has that particular domain name and has opened any email now you can include a date of the activity if you want it to be for all time you literally press the cross button here and that will be removed you'll also notice that you are able to add in constraints for this particular filter test variance is mobile device was opened on a mobile device um, the platform the browser the date of the activity a minimum number of times for this particular video we're not going to add any extra constraints onto this particular field so we're going to leave it as email address is and has opened any email when we click the leads button again you'll notice that the list will be reduced based on the f extra filter that we added into the smart list if we go back to the smart list again you'll notice at the top here it says use all filters so it means that that one and that one applies we also have the option to choose any filter so in other words that one or that one now doing that on this particular smart list would mean that anybody in the entire database that's opened an email so we're going to leave it as and for the time being if we add another criteria in here and the, this criteria is clicked a link within an email we can do any again and we can take off the date activity using the all filter means that anybody that has an email address that contains LBDGA and has opened an email any email and has clicked a link in the email any email we can add the or criteria and you'll notice that the advanced filter is now available and what this means is that this allows you to specify the criteria and the order in which they appear so you could have I would like one and two or three alright and what we're going to do is we're going to bracket those just to make that a correct formula so in other words it is anybody that has an email address that contains lbdga.com and has opened any email or anyone in the database that has clicked an email so as you can see you could have an all criteria which is one and two and three any filters one or two or three or an advanced filter which is a combination of the both if you click on the test smart list tab which is the name of the smart list that you created you'll get a summary of the actual smart list so it tells you what type it, what type of list it is it's a smart list when it was created last modified when you last run the actual count 
what the numbers are in there, when the run finished, how long it took to run, and it also gives you a summary of all the filters that you've actually got within the smart list. So we've got three filters in this, and we have the all filters applied. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below, and remember to subscribe for future videos.